Peace, world majority brothers and sisters. This is the Ice Breaker once again. We got a lot of ice to break and not a lot of water to spill. So since there's no time to waste, let's get right into it. Okay, okay. In money news, the Arizona Republic reported last week that the cost to defend SB 1070 has now topped the $1 million mark. Since Jan Brewer's legal defense fund has over $3.7 million to burn, one wonders the miracles this money could do to, well, I don't know, create a few jobs, improve schools, provide health care, help families out of foreclosures, unnecessary things like that. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco heard arguments for and against the partial injunction of SB 1070 on Monday. But the three-judge panel assigned a rule likely will not make their decision for weeks or even months. And even after that, Governor Brewer has pledged to take the legislative battle all the way to the Supreme Court. In a twist, Russell Pierce was denied the ability to speak on behalf of the law by both the Ninth Circuit and by Jan Brewer. Pierce said he would still fly to San Francisco and attend a hearing. In his words, I would love to have my five minutes. I wrote the bill. But did he write it alone? Last week, Laura Sullivan of National Public Radio blew the lid open on the circumstances of SB 1070's rise and made us think twice about the substance of democracy in a country where money changes hands every day in backroom deals. In December 2009, at the Washington, D.C. Grand Hyatt, Russell Pierce attends the American Legislative Exchange Council's States and Nation Policy Summit. For those of us who are unfamiliar with ALEC, as it's commonly known, it was conceived in 1973 by a faction of far-right Republicans whose main goal was to advance their ideas back into laws. They were all part of the conservative backlash against the broadly defined New Left movements of the 60s that pressured the United States government to pull out of Vietnam and make certain civil rights and economic concessions to labor and people of color. Alec's emphasis was to restore economic and thus political power to traditional elites through privatization of pretty much anything on the market and criminalization and marginalization of pretty much anyone who would oppose, primarily people of color, who were part of the new left, their legislation. While Alec calls itself a think tank that favors conservative policy solutions, this description is merely a veil for being the legislative arm to what we now know as neoliberalism or the restoration of full economic dominance to a small elite who felt threatened by the upsurge in global movements against capitalism in the mid-20th century. Its slogan, limited government, free markets, federalism, really means limit the government to doing our bidding and no one else's. Because if they were really about limited government, why does their webpage say, and I quote, Literally hundreds of dedicated ALEC members have worked together to create, develop, introduce, and guide to enactment many of the cutting-edge conservative policies that have now become the law in the states. Furthermore, why would they be concocting legislation like SB 1070 behind closed doors, as we'll see later? Russell Pierce is meeting with ALEC in December of 2009. So is the ALEC member Corrections Corporation of America, better known as CCA, the largest of the many businesses involved in the prison's for-profit hustle gang. Russell Pierce did a presentation to 50 people in a conference room. CCA and Pierce were a match made in heaven, not only because they both have seats on ALEC boards, but because CCA believes immigration detention is its next big market. And Pierce, well, Pierce is a hate and fear monger. Corporate power and Kentucky Fried White Nationalism said their marriage vows at this meeting and named their bond the Support Our Law Enforcement and Safe Neighborhoods Act. No one in the room opposed the bill, and it became certified model legislation for ALEC, to be later mimicked across the country. So, the legislation that we now know as 1070 came from a conference room in a Hyatt Hotel in Washington, D.C. Word for word, as it was presented at the Grand Hyatt, the Pierce, CCA, Alec Frankenstein hits the Arizona legislature in January of 2010. 36 co-sponsors jumped to support it. It helped that two-thirds of these co-sponsors were at the Alec Policy Summit a month earlier and or are members of Alec. It's telling that 30 of these co-sponsors received campaign donations from the private prison industry after the support of SB 1070. And even more telling that Governor Brewer's spokesperson and campaign advisor are both former prison lobbyists. Many who are pushing laws similar to SB 1070 across the country are ALEC members, 
Five of those people were in the same conference room with Russell Pierce that fateful day when SB 1070 was created. To put all this in perspective, Alec passes over 200 bills a year and actually utilizes puppets like Pierce and Brewer to convince regular folks that the corporate mission to incarcerate migrant workers to the benefit of the private prison industry is the will of the people. It has never been about human or drug trafficking, upholding federal law, beheadings, taking jobs, or any of the rest of that nonsensical rhetoric of fear. When Jan Brewer says things like, I will personally attend this hearing on behalf of the overwhelming majority of citizens who support the rule of law, the translation is, I'm working these streets for my pimps, CCA and Alec. Because think about it, would suit and tie types like Alec ever go so far as to even shake the hands of the millions of folks who end up supporting their laws? They probably call them fanatical and fringe behind their backs. Because there comes a time when they have to make the simple decision. Grand Hyatt or Waffle House. Grand Hyatt or Waffle House. I'll let you take it from there. When we realize that corporate power is buying politicians, legislation, and elections, we can rule out the possibility that our vote is our voice, and we can conclude the following. To be about justice for migrant workers is of course to be against SB 1070. To be against SB 1070 is to be against the forces that created it, meaning it is to be against Russell Pierce, CCA, and Alec. To be against Alec is to be against neoliberalism and its attempts to buy the world. So, let all activists and onlookers finally know, respect, and act on the fact that our fight is against much more than one law, a series of laws, or even some herd mentality Tea Party movement. The sooner we make our fight to restructure the prevailing forces of economic and political power, the more creative our resistance will become, and the less we will have to rely on the charade of voting in rigged elections. And the sooner we ally our struggle against forces such as CCA to other movements to end police terror, stop the creation of a police state, and crush the prison industrial complex, we will outnumber our foe. The struggle is won. Peace.